Guys, we are here on the AP Tour, and I am here with Never Shout Never, or as you might know him, Christopher Drew. How you doing, man? Doing great. How are you? I'm doing all right. And uh, who else do I have here? Uh, Taylor McPhee. Yeah. I play bass. Taylor <laughs> plays bass in, in my band, The Shout. They're the best band that's ever existed. And Absolutely. I'm, and I am uh, just a weirdo, and I'm blessed with a great backing band. Absolutely. And I like the hat, by the way. Thank you, dude. Um, speaking of hats, here's some sunglasses. I think they're very Brian Starr. All right. He wants me to put these on, right? Can you hold this real quick? Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. All right, let me get these on. <laughs> he asked me to wear these, so I'm going to do that. Brian Starr. Oh, so, baby. Do you have a uh, quick warm-up question? Do you have a guilty pleasure? Um, musically? Musically, um, whatever you want to talk about. I think my guilty pleasure is probably Lady Gaga. Oh, yeah? Because she's a fucking freak. <laughs> <laughs> you were living in your car for a while. What was it like to go from that to... You know, a hundred thousand plays on MySpace, all the all the craziness that comes with being on like the AP tour. What? Thanks, Jeremy. What's up, Jeremy? One more time, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, I'm just gonna say, <laughs> you you were in your car, okay? Yeah, yeah, you had this really. I mean, that must have been really tough for for someone like our age to do that. Kind of fun, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I liked the car phase. The car phase made me uh, it made me want. You know what I mean? It made me. Uh, it made me really have the motivation and go for it, you know, and really just keep writing songs every day because I felt like that was my only escape, you know, and uh, sometimes I wish I could go back to the car phase, you know what I mean, because it was such a, such a free time for me, free time for expression, you know, I didn't have any fans up my ass about playing full band songs and stuff, you know, and, um, you know, so the car phase was fun, but now this phase is even more fun because the reality is that I just have such a great opportunity to like spread love and spread joy you know and write happy songs because this world's so sad right now and all they really want to do is take what I had the sadness that I had and learn from it and learn to be happy and try to teach people to be happy 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 happy, happy. happy. everyone's happy oh, okay. happy 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 have some happy never shout never happy happy Happy, happy, I'm fucking happy. Happy, 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 happy. Do you, you guys have fun on tour? It seems like we just party, man. We don't really care about anything at all, ever. <laughs> Do you have any responsibilities? Um, write <laughs> songs and have some yeah. fun and make people smile. I, you're a unique interview. I've never interviewed anyone like you, and I've interviewed a lot of bands. So. And in a good way. So yeah. <laughs> you're the weirdest guy I have ever met. Perfect, dude. I hope I so. Never want to talk to you again. Dude, that, oh, <laughs> come on. I'm taking the shades back. All man. right. Brian stars. Brian stars. Brian stars. Brian stars. Brian stars. Brian stars. Sorry, sorry. I found. <laughs> I found my two biggest fans here. Yeah. yeah. I love it, dude. Yeah, I love the guys, shades, dude. You it's guys so are sexy. awesome. That's awesome. Oh, hell yeah. You guys are so chill. So, um, a couple, of, a couple of stories. I know you've got a couple. So, what has been your never dreamed in a million years moment since this started? Um, hmm. I don't know. I think right now. Oh yeah. Right <laughs> now, it just freaking hit me Brian that this is stars. unbelievable. I'm meeting the Brian Stars, <laughs> and if you don't know about him yet, you're gonna know about him. All right. Those shades say it all. And as I said, you can go pick up some some of those shades on on his merch right. merch online. So pick them up. Um, but right now is just freaking amazing. I'm so happy. I'm so I'm enjoying life. I live in the moment. I live in the now. I don't live in the past. The past is bullshit. The future is bullshit. Right now is fucking awesome though. He's got me feeling happy, man. This guy's cool. <laughs> yep, happiness. <laughs> no wonder I feel like you I should put my arm around you. Come here. Why come don't here, you come sit a little? Come, come on, let me be on right you for a minute. <laughs> this is my friend here. These are my friends. Friends. That's right. Um, <laughs> so you guys have this attitude, but that's got to lead to a little bit of, um, you know, you ever get into trouble on tour? Maybe cops get involved. I mean. Cuffs aren't always the nicest people. You guys ever have any issues? We're, uh, oh, we're, <laughs> the, we're, yeah. we're the nicest people ever. Like, who could be mad at us? All we want to, do, all we do is like smile and laugh and be like, "Sorry, dude, we suck." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, of, like questionable legality or anything. Uh, we're, we're literally good kids. We just have a, we just have a small town attitude that we're like. We're in a tour bus right now, and we come from a little town where nobody gets to do anything, so we're just freaking pumped, you know what I mean? Like, literally. This is, this is always a fun one. What's the worst show you've ever played? Um, I don't know. 
have we ever played a really bad show? <laughs> Probably, uh, like, not in Never Shout. I don't think we've ever, like... Because, I mean, it's just too much fun just to hang out with, with I mean, your friends. We, we suck live, yeah. kind of, but <laughs> we have a freaking good time, and that's all that matters. Every night, even if we mess up, we're like, ah, I just messed up! Ah! You know what I mean? Like, that's the attitude we have. We don't care. I was up till... I was up till... I was up till 9.30 this morning. 9.30 a.m. That's why I'm a fucking lunatic right now. I was literally up. I was writing songs, just loving life, and... Literally enjoying every moment. I watched the sunrise this morning. Talked to my bus driver for a while. It was it was one of the most beautiful mornings I've had. I smoked like a pack and a half of cigarettes all night. Just like fucking broed down with myself. You seem to really enjoy the little things. Yeah, that's, that's what it's all so about. Bad. How? Get out of my head, Carl. Dude, stop. <laughs> stop. No. Um. I I mean the little things. I enjoy I enjoy the moments. Every morning I usually wake up and poop. That's part of my schedule. I'll smoke about two cigarettes and then I'll you know hustle around to find a bathroom. You know, it's usually that can be a challenge on, on I think on that's the real reason why I wake up every morning because I have to poop. Poop. It's a good reason. Poops. God's beautiful poop. Poop. That is so true. Every single person in this entire world poops, so don't act like you're better than that. You know what I'm saying? You're not better than pooping. <laughs> Get over yourself. I pooped like an hour ago. I've pooped three times today. How many times you pooped today, Brian? Like twelve. <laughs> 12 God. times. This is a fucking legend. This is a god of all right. poop. This is this is Brian Stars. This is Brian Stars, and I'm pooping 12 times. <laughs> all right, guys. Never shout never. Thank you so much, Chris. I really appreciate it. My pleasure, my friend. These guys are fucking awesome. I'm not going to lie. So, Brian Stars chill. interviews. We'll see you guys Damn. later. Peace out! Yeah! Woo! Peace Let's out. party! Yeah, this is the move. Brian you need to the Cosby too. Brian Stars, never shout, never shout. Yeah. Yeah. He just cries for his heart. Love his fucking hat. This is awesome. Yeah. Woo. Brian Stars. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, I'm going out the window. Fuck y'all. Peace out. I'll see you guys later. Uh oh. Whoa. Peace out. Hey, what's up you guys? We are on our way to Never Shout Never, and I am here with my friends Andy hey. and Nate. What's up? And Nate, you're not wearing pants. This is true. Laser no, excited. No pants. We drove three hours tonight. It's like three in the morning. There's no clock there because I replaced it with a fan. Nate, I love my fans, don't I? It does. All three of them. <laughs> One. Two, three. Actually, we got into this hotel room that we're staying in, and it's literally like 90 degrees. So we have the AC on 54. We have the fridge open with the fucking fan that I brought. <laughs> and Nate's not wearing pants. And then, yeah, Brian brought a fan to blow him while he sleeps. And I brought a fan to blow. <laughs> so, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. What? <laughs> It's like four in the morning, we're pretty much out of our minds. So we're about to go to bed. You excited, Nate? Yeah, if you're in Missouri, come sleep with us. <laughs> Any last words, Nate, for tomorrow? Good night. You look like now. <gasps> Good night. Nate, it's fucking cold, dude. <laughs> Who, who's bad here is it to make it 60 degrees? Dude, it's mine, it's 54 in here. Dude, it's fucking cold. So yeah, we slept all night, and we're packing up, and it's like 50 degrees in here, and Nate is cold. I'm, my hair is frozen, look at that. <laughs> Your hair looks amazing, by the way. I know, ladies, <laughs> get at me. No, ladies, get at me. Fucking, like, look like... Fucking get at Brian Stars. Get be a star. Fuck Brian Stars. What? Hey, how you feeling, Andy? <laughs> so I kind of wanted to talk about this before we get there, but you like, you're like a Christopher Drew's kind of like your idol a little bit, right? Like you've you've loved this guy for a long time. 
Sexually, yeah. <laughs> Sexually, like you, you're, you have like a restraining order. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't like to talk about it. Oh, dude, this is kind of cool. You're getting to meet him today, right? Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm excited. I mean, but on a serious note, like you, you were the one who told me about him back in the day, and you like on a my voice just cracked. On well. a serious note, this is gonna be very fun. Yeah, dude. It's gonna be exciting. Finally, get to meet Never Shot Never. I'm gonna be going to your. I'm gonna keep showing Fear your face off. throughout the day whenever you see him. All right. All right. Just think, Nate, down this road is your idol. Dude, he's only two and a half hours away. Are you gonna fangirl when you see him? Yeah, I'm a fan guy. <laughs> you're gonna fan guy. <laughs> and you realize you're gonna have to restrain Nate, right? I'll have Hold to restrain Hold me back! So you guys might not recognize these sunglasses, Nate. Can you look at me real quick? These are actually the sunglasses that Christopher Drew uh, gave me during the first Never Show Never interview. And Nate was a huge fan of Never Show Never. We're so, bringing them back. So I actually gave them to him. And you've kept them for what, this two years? Time. This whole time. Don't you like wear them every day and every shit? Every day, dude. Brought them with me everywhere I go. And now we're going to bring them back. He's not going to get yeah. a keep them. I mean, you're going to keep it. Yeah, no, fuck that. He's not getting these back. <laughs> Can't he be, can't prove that they're his. He can't be like, thank you for holding on to these for a couple of years now. <laughs> I'll, I'll be take, taking that. I'll take, it, I'll take those back. Oh, those were the, that's where those are. Thank yeah, you. Dude. Can you, can I, can you film me real quick wearing it? I just want to like put them on to feel the magic again. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you two. <laughs> Look at how sexy Brian looks. <laughs> oh my gosh, let's zoom in on that. Yeah, dude. It's like full circle moment right now. Look at Brian's crotch. <laughs> All right, guys. So we made it to Springfield. Andy, you excited to be out of the car? Oh fuck! Yes. <laughs> hey, all your fans are gonna recognize you over there, dude. Good thing you're wearing those sunglasses to hide you. Nate, so the New York Times is gonna be here. What do you think it's gonna be like? Well, I think they're gonna be pretty honored to meet me, but... Uh... <laughs> yeah, dude, the New York Times is here to meet Nate. They're gonna ask him about his keys and... <laughs> and his hair. <laughs> his hair. His septum ring. Like, his septum ring. Actually, yeah, I'm really excited to meet the New York Times. Yeah. And uh, you got your cigarettes, so we're good to go. Life is good. Alright guys, look who we found. It's the New York Hi. Times guy, Chris. What's up, man? Hey, how you doing? I'm good. I like your beard. Thank you. I like your hair. Thank you. I like Thank your you. camera. Thank you. It's like very, everything about uh, Jesus, you. Jesus, right? <laughs> you look, Jesus is here. <laughs> Are you here to take us to heaven? Of course. 2012. All of you. All of you. Yeah, it's 2012. All of us except Andy, <laughs> except right? This guy. This guy. Sorry. He yeah, didn't yeah. make it. He didn't make the cut. So, uh, yeah, I've already been recognized twice today, and you thought that was pretty cool, right? Yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, it was pretty epic. You got, uh, you got some... Hmm? You're Jesus. You haven't been recognized yet. Not not today. I usually do. Well, it's good to have you, man. Oh, if you could you bless my interview me. today, that'd be awesome. You're blessed, <laughs> my child. Do, do it one more time. You're going to bless you're, me. You're blessed, my child. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, we're good to go. <laughs> All right, Jesus, we're going to interview Never Show Never right now. Are you excited? I am, yeah. It's going to be, be fun. I think so. So, yeah, we're heading backstage now. As you can see, there's already a line of people. Is this the venue? Yeah. All right, I'm glad we brought you, Jesus. <laughs> he knows everything. Is the world going to end this year? No, not this year. Okay, thank God, because I'm still a virgin. <laughs> Oh, 
So Nate, we made it to the show. How do you feel? Dude, I'm absolutely loving it. Dude, there's your there's your idol, man. There he is. Being all sexy and cool. It's been, a long, it's been a long time coming. I know, dude. Literally. Literally a long time I, I coming. I spent a long time coming. You got your sunglasses ready? Yeah, dude. I'm fucking check my shit out. We're gonna check out the green room. Oh, okay. Let's do it. Nice. Ah, sweet. This is where we're doing the interview, I guess. This will be cool. It just says pudding. <laughs> pudding. Yeah, dude, this would be really cool. Like right here. If we just stood like right here. Is that good lighting? Yeah, it looks great. You want to just sit down? Yeah, dude, I'm down. Ooh, there's two stools in there. Well, there's stools there. We'll sit right here, that's cool with you guys. Yeah, can we move that chair like right here maybe? Hey, what's up you guys? We're hanging out here with Never Shout Never again. How you doing, man? I'm doing stupendous, man. All right. Better than, better than ever. Do you remember me? Yeah, dude, I actually... I think I heard about you starting some rumors about us that we broke up. Nah, dude. Yeah, I definitely saw that on the internet, man. Why are you doing that? No, I was commenting on your alternative press magazine. Yeah, well, we definitely didn't break up, man. I don't like false rumors being started about us, you know? Nah, dude. Well, you're not breaking up, right? No, man. We never have been. All right, well, that was glad something that somebody made up. Okay. Were you guys good to go, though? Yeah, we're great. All right, dude. Well, let us start with the fun one here. Did you guys, uh, if you guys are porn stars, what do you think your porn star name would be? Grandpa T. Grandpa T? Yeah, I think so. It's <laughs> pretty sweet, pretty sweet. What do you think your catchphrase would be? You want some candy? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of creepy, dude. Well, you know, I'm kind of a creep. It, it's, I'm kind of a creep. We'll just leave it That's there. It's okay, man. Yeah. It, I'm a little bit of a creep, too. Fair enough. Fair, Fair enough. enough. How about you, Chris? What would your porn star name be? Uh, Captain Cheese. Captain Cheese? Yeah. Yeah. Not cut the cheese. Not yo cheese. Not yo cheese, man. Not yo cheese. No. <laughs> How about you, man? What would your porn star name be? Uh, I don't Hands know. Ransom. Yeah, sure. Hands Ransom. Yeah, that's a yeah. DJ name sometimes. <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, Chris, what would you say is your girliest feature? Uh, probably my legs. Yeah? Yeah, I got... I got feminine legs. Yeah, dude. You got the jeans, got the got the peace symbol. <laughs> yeah, that's girly. You put a, like, a lot of uh, effort into your appearance, man. I like it, though. No, I don't try at all, actually, dude. Really? Yeah. Uh -huh. Wake up and go. Just wake up and go. I'm pretty sure this is what we all, we all slept in these clothes last huh. night. Very cool. And then woke up and went to the studio. What do you guys think of the whole Aeropostale? Actually, you want to hear a fun story? Yeah. Um, we were in... Uh, we were in Indiana, Pennsylvania, playing at a um, like there was a little college there, and this dude after the show came up and was talking to us. It was Cinco de Mayo, so all the college the the students were all wasted, and this kid was coming up and talked to me, and he had an Air Apostle shirt on, mm -hmm. and um, it was pink. And I told him I told him how dumb it looked <laughs> and how dumb it was, and then I made him take it off and give it to me, and I threw it into the top of a tree. Wow. Yeah. And so the, well, don't do that to me. Yeah, I mean, well. <laughs> Yeah, there's no Hanging up on the on I the line. I almost guarantee you that if I catch you not paying attention, you might have to be climbing up to Are get it. Are you comfortable with taking your shirt off right now? Maybe I, at the I end of the video. I don't want that to happen because then I will throw it up in the top of the thing. So, and I don't want you to leave here without. Well, a shirt. I just want you to be comfortable taking your shirt off, bro. At the end of the video, as payback for whatever rumor you think I started, I'll let you throw my shirt up there. And uh, I'll try and get it down. Papa T's throwing it. All right, all right, all right. Then we'll be even. Then we'll be even. Okay. Hey, we've been even the whole time, man. <laughs> All right. Um, actually, let's give you a cheap shot. Insult me right now, Chris. Give me your best shot right now. Um, I don't know, man. Give an Aeropostale shirt on. <laughs> Boom, roasted. <laughs> Ooh, okay, okay. You got one. How about you? Nah, man. I don't, I don't insult, man. I just constructive criticism. Right, give me some constructive criticism. Um, just chill out, you know? Chill out? Yeah. Okay. All right. How about, uh, can you insult Chris? Some, say something mean about him? Chris, you care too much about your friends and family. His, uh, his, actually, his greatest flaw that I just insulted him is his greatest strength as well. Yeah. 
Like, we don't. Just, we don't. Compliment you real quick. <laughs> like your mustache, always have, always will. Although I have been tempted to shave it off in your sleep many times. <laughs> creepy. I would, I would really cry. That creepy I think grandpa that's the stash. One thing that would that would make me cry. I think you've called me creepy enough times that I might throw you into the rafters. <laughs> <laughs> I know I look wiry, but there's a lot of stuff going on under the under the scenes. Eh, yeah. We should have a wrestling match later, <sighs> naked. Boy, I tell you what. <laughs> I t boy, I tell you what. You're the wrong tree, bud. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we'll see what happens. Might have to hop on the good foot and do the bad thing. On a, sp on a scale of prison terms, how hot do you think you are? Um, I don't know. I'd probably shave my head before I went to prison, so I wouldn't be too attractive. I have a really weirdly shaped head, so. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty hot. <laughs> no. No. Um, no. No. Yeah, how about I have a question. Okay. Uh, when are we going to start talking about music? Because that's what we're all about. Oh, we'll get there. We're just warming up. Uh, well, I'd like to start now. Are these all... No, we just picked random ones. Oh, whoo wee! Start picking the ones about music, cause that's what we're. Let's at. see. Hold on. Let me see. Let me let me take a look at a couple of these. All right. Um. Let's see. No. <laughs> nope. Here, hold on. I got one for you. We will go to Sirius. Oh, yes, there's a whole Sirius section. Great. There is. Great. Yeah, they're very well labeled. Um, why do you think? you guys have gotten as big as you have. Because on Facebook, you have four million fans. And that is a pretty insane number. Yeah. Um, I think it's just because we're uh, giving it all we got, you know? Mm -hmm. I, think that's our, I think that's why. I think our minds are in the right place. We're doing it for the right reasons. And uh, we're not about any bullshit. We're just about real deal stuff. And, you know, I started young, so there are some songs that are pretty, like, prepubescent. But other than that, I mean, we've been very real with everyone. And I think that's why we're still able to make music is because we're real. Yeah, man. There's no sugar cutting anymore. You've seen uh, Chris change a lot over the years. What uh -huh. do you, I mean, how do you feel about how you guys have sort of evolved as a band? Well, I mean, we just, I'm, I mean, we've known each other for such a long time that, and being friends for such a long time that you just kind of, you don't really notice it until you kind of step back and look at it because you're all growing up together at the exact same time and enjoying the exact same, well, not the exact same things, but enjoying a lot of the same things and growing up together. So it's kind of like, it's not like watching, you know, your son or daughter or niece or nephew grow up real quick in front of you. It's kind of just like a, a thing that you sort of miss. Well, we're growing up together. You know what I mean? That's the best part is like as much as I change, you know, these guys are changing too. Hayden's kind of the exact same. He's been growing a oh, beard since he was a kid. Yeah, but he's, you know, he's changed in a good way. <laughs> there you go. Um, how do you want to be remembered, you know? I mean... This is all cool now and you're 25, but what do you think it'll be like when you're older? Or what do you think your legacy will be? 25. Yeah. 22, 23. 21. 21. Um, 19, 15, 12, no. I mean, I don't know. I, I guess for whatever we do, you know, I, I, I think that we can't really ask to be remembered, you know. I think we'll be remembered with our friends and family, but, you know, I think other than that, it's all about, I don't know, just staying real, you know. and doing it for the right reasons. I feel like there's so much greed and so many ugly ugly feelings and ugly things in this world that if you can stand for beauty and, you know, having a beautiful purpose behind what you do, then I think that that's the best thing to be remembered by. But I don't really ask to be remembered. I just ask to uh, be here now. Yeah, man. Um, let's see. Do you think, uh, do you think you're arrogant? Uh, no, I don't. Do you think you're strange? Uh, people are strange, yeah. I mean, everybody's a little strange. Arrogance is something that you can't overcome. Strangeness is something you will never overcome because everyone's very strange. So You probably think other people are strange. Yeah, but not as, not as strange as they may think so. I mean, I, I see everybody as pretty normal, you know? Except for the people that are, that are normal. Then I think they're stranger than the people that are strange. Yeah, man. <clears throat> Let's see. A couple fill in the blanks. These will be kind of fun for you. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. Uh, I know, I know that expression. No, you just fill it in. I mean, uh, it's on your own. Fool me twice, then. I'm the fool. I'm the fool. There you go. I like it. Uh, or excuse me, the carpet matches the drapes. Then what? Interior decorating. It's <laughs> a good answer. Um, what color is it? Let's see. Do you think you're a good role model, Chris? Um, I play my role, and 
Um, I'm very real about it, and if anybody wants to take after that role, they can, and I don't ask them to, but if anybody sees it poorly, then they should look at their own life and see how they can improve it and become a better person, not look at mine and try to tell me how to be a better person. What do you think, um, I mean, I actually went back and watched some of your older videos from when you were like 16, 17. What do you think if, I don't know, you met him in like a time machine or something, do you think he'd be surprised at how you've turned out? No, I mean, I've just been being me, you know? Every day is a new little journey. Every day is a new fun adventure. You guys still enjoy this? What's that? You guys still enjoy doing this? Yeah, I love doing this. If you mean playing music, yeah, I love it. It's, yeah, it's, doing interviews? No. <laughs> well, um, no, I love playing music. It's, it's it all depends on the questions and the yeah. substance that, you know, the fans are going to get out of the interview. You know, if they're just going to get a bunch of bullshit out of it, then there's no point in doing it. But if they're going to actually get how we feel and our true passions for what we do, then hell yeah, I want to interview all fucking day. You know, but if it's just a bunch of bullshit, I want nothing to do with it. Yeah. Well, that's why we're here to do a good interview for you. So, all right. Um, let's see. What do your What do your fans actually? I mean, fan, every band goes out on stage and says, "We love our fans," or you know, "We love you guys. You guys are the best." But I mean, what do you actually? Do you guys mean that, or what do your fans mean to you? Oh yeah, sure. There's people outside right now that have been there probably two, three hours. It's 100 degrees outside. Yeah. I mean, if they're stoked, you know, like then makes us more stoked. You know, we feed off. We feed off the energy of the audience, you know, every night, and um, we just try to set positive vibes into the airwaves, you know, like whenever I'm up there, I look at it as medicine for everyone, you know, as I'm, I'm sending good vibes into the crowd, I'm sending good vibes into that, and they're sending it back. I'm feeding off them, they're feeding off me, and that's a beautiful thing if we can feed off each other's positive energy, because positive energy is truly medicine, so, hell yeah, I, I love my fans dearly. They can be, you know fickle just like anybody else in the world can be but they're also very dedicated to what we do and and we're dedicated to you know making music for them and and as long as they want to you know as long as they want to listen to our songs then we'll keep you know keep making them all right cool hey Nate can you come here real quick this is my friend Nate he's actually the one who told me about you two three years ago and these are the sunglasses you actually gave me during the interview oh, cool. <laughs> and uh, he's actually worn around his neck every day do you remember nice. these yeah sure those are the ones you gave me during that video. Full circle, huh? Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah. Don't lose those. I won't. Well, they're, they're his now. Oh, so. yeah. Don't lose those. It must be amazing to know you have that kind of, uh, kind of an effect on people, you know? Yeah, I mean, they, they take it, you know, it's, it's an individual thing. It's not about me. None of this is about me. It's not about my, trying to grow my ego or anything like that. It's about killing egos, and I'm an ego destroyer, and that's, that's my mission in this life. So... If I can just help kill egos, that's all I want. It's not about me though, it's not about my effect, it's about your effect. This is a fun one. My favorite thing about my body is... I don't know if I have one, probably my mustache. I do like your mustache, you keep going back to that mustache. Uh, it's all I got. All right. I've got my girlfriend, it's my dog. It's all I've got. My dog, my friends, and my mustache. My favorite thing about Chris's body... My favorite thing about Chris's body? Yeah. It's weird, man. Yeah, I don't know if I... This is like, you know, ask us some like relevant questions, dude. Like, not about our bodies. I mean, hell, I, I love my body. I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, yes. I love exactly who I am. The flaws, the imperfections, everything. I look at it all and I, I love it. Yeah. And everyone else should, too, regardless. Your imperfections are almost as beautiful as your perfections, you know? Because we're all beautiful and ugly at the same time. And uh, so I would have to say everyone should love their body. I love my body, regardless if my legs are skinnier than the rest of my body, you know? Because that's something that... You have to deal with whenever you run cross country in high school, you know. Yeah. And uh, but you love it. You love your flaws, and that's. I hope everybody can feel that way. Is to love their flaws more than their their beauty, you know. What are these tattoos you have? Like, what what do they mean? Like, what is there one that means more to you than? Dude, they all mean a lot to me. They're all. I mean, if I just pick one, I'm like, like, what does that one mean? Uh, it's an anchor, and it has my father's initials on this side, my mother's on this side, and it means. Pretty much, my parents are my anchors, you know, they keep me, they keep me grounded in a very beautiful sense, a very balanced sense, and, uh, you know, that's why I got it, is because is they're the ones that I remember whenever I, I need to come back down to earth, you know. You got the medallion here? Yeah. Adidas soccer jersey? Mm -hmm. Life is a sport, earth is our court. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Good quote. And you got the eagle on your neck. Uh, it's a red-tailed hawk, and it's, uh, it's, my, it's my first spirit guide I discovered. Uh, I'm on a shamanic path. I don't know if you know what that means, but... I don't. Could you explain? 
Uh, no, that's for you to look into yourself. Okay. Yeah. But it's, I guess, the short version, it's like a spiritual journey sort of thing? Exactly, yeah. It's, it's about spiritual growth and understanding of the spirit world, and you have animal spirit guides to help you along, and that was the first one that I discovered through going to a shaman down in Dallas, Texas, and uh, went in a trance state and uh, met my spirit, or spirit guide, which was a red-tailed hawk, and that's the story behind it. Very cool. Um, let's see. You have, uh, how does it, do you, do you pay attention to what haters say? No, man, uh, the way I look at hate, dude, it's just another form of love, man. They can't express themselves or they can't accept, you know, and they, and they throw the exact opposite of how they truly feel, you know. So I really don't, I don't listen to haters, I don't, I don't listen to good stuff, I don't listen to bad stuff, because either way, you know, it's all the same to me, you know. You need, I need the bad, I need the bad to even out the good, you know. And uh, the more good there is, the more bad there is, and that's and that's the way the world is. That's you know, it's just how it is. It's a balance, and I love I love the balance. I love the haters just as much much as I love the lovers. You might think that's wrong, but it's true. It's it's, it's equal. Yeah, man. <sighs> if heaven exists, what do you think God is gonna say to you when you get to the pearly gates, or what do you want him to say? I'm already in I'm already in heaven, so yeah. And I've already talked to God, and he's uh. What do you say? He's just happy that I'm happy, and I'm happy that he exists, and that's it. So you're happy? I'm in heaven. Wow. So I'm in heaven too. If you let yourself be. Heaven is a mindset. Heaven is a, it's a place where you can, you can reside, where you can live in hell. Heaven on earth, hell on earth. Your decision. It's hmm. deep, man. What have you learned from Chris being in a band as long as you have with him? Just oh, lo- Lots of stuff from each other. I mean, but it's not about it's not because we've been in a band together. It's more just because we've grown up together, and it's the same way with everybody else that's in this room right now that the camera can't see because for some reason or another, you know, we're put in a spotlight. But Mm -hmm. I mean, I've learned just as much from Deco as I have from Chris, and Hayden's learned just as much from Carter as you know I have from Steven. And it's, I mean. Yeah. You learn st- I mean, we're all equals, man. I mean, if you, you can't see that by now, we're all equals. Me and you, everyone's equals, dude. And we can all learn exactly the same amount of information from each other yeah. as we would learn from anyone else. All you have to do is love and be compassionate and, you know, befriend people because everyone's, everyone's friends, you know? What do you think about that guy over there with the <laughs> weird thing? No, not, not him. The, <laughs> not, not the camera. Here, Andy, get a shot of that. The, that guy up there. Uh, looks like he knows how to party. Is that you in 20 years? It's me right now, man. It's, your, it's you tonight, okay. Um, what is, uh, what's your favorite song to perform live? Mine? Yeah. I don't know, I like them all. Yep. Favorite? Nope. They're all great. Is there one that's more hard to play than others? Nope. They're all the same. Listening to your song uh, "Sell Out" on the way here. Sure. What uh, I guess what it what was that song? What, what what inspired that song? I was just sitting in my bedroom and I wrote a song. You know, it's, I was just expressing how I felt about it all at the moment. You know, I was just kind of stoned and was writing about the whole corporate side of music. You know, it's just everything's driven by greed and everything's just it's really it's really whack. You know, especially whenever you get to the upper, you know, major labels and things like that. It's pretty wacky, you know, everything's driven off money, you know, and uh, that's just kind of how I felt, you know, money is, money and music, it's a, it's a deadly combination, you know, so it's, it's not really, but I've accepted it and I've grown past it and I love the, I love the industry side of it now because I, you know, I own a record label now myself and I understand it and there's a good way to do it, you know, there's a good way to where the artist and the label have a great relationship and the money is distributed, distributed the way it's supposed to, you know, to grow the band and to, release their art because it's all about the art at the end of the day um i know a lot of our viewers are like teenage girls you've been uh you've been around longer than than they have what what love advice would you give how do you feel about love um love is a beautiful thing you know i my greatest thing is don't get attached you know attachment is is the root to jealousy and to uh all the bad things that have to do with love you know don't be attached fall in love as many times as you can in this life because every time it's just as fun 
and fall in love, and, but don't become attached to people because once you're attached to people, your ideas, your beliefs, that's whenever your ego gets created. And once the ego is formed, then you're living in hell. If you can kill the ego, you're in heaven. So uh, if you have to break up with a girl, what's the best way to do it? Uh, I haven't broken up with a girl in a long time, so I don't know what the <laughs> answer to that question is. I've been with my girlfriend for a while, so wow, I don't okay. know what it would be like to break up with anybody. Don't plan on it. Okay, that's good. Um, I gotta ask, because I drove seven hours for this interview, but are you, are you mad at me because of the rest in peace, never shot, never video, or in that one in particular? Dude, I'm not mad at you, man. I just, you know, I like people being real, and I like people, well, I you know, mean, it, I, I honestly, it seems like you are trying to make a mockery of all the bands that you're interviewing, you know, and, and really, we're, you know, especially whenever somebody's passionate and being true to their art and true to their heart, I mean, being, making a mockery of that, dude, is, it's really what blasphemous. You, I think that's, un, like, how? What am I doing? I mean, just these questions are, are ridiculous, dude. We don't really want to talk about those type of things. We want to talk about our art and what we're doing. We're in the studio right now, and that's, that's what we've been doing, you know? And that's what we want to talk about is because this is a, a music interview, you know? And we, to we be, are musicians. To be fair, though, I have put my passion and my heart and soul and traveled all over the country and poured thousands of hours of my time into this. I've interviewed hundreds of bands, and every other artist I've had on the show loves being on the show. And the interview we did, your fans love. You should sure, read the comments. That was, that was really great. No, I saw the interview and I thought it was super amazing. But you, you know, did? I just there's yeah. similar questions. Yeah, but the thing is, is you know, these guys don't appreciate questions that are bullshit because these guys are real musicians. I don't know if you know that. And I, it seems like dude, all, the focus said they on, all the focus is on me too. Whenever there's a three-piece band, and I don't appreciate that because it's awkward for me. I've asked him two questions and he hasn't given me an answer. Well, because you've been you've been weird about it, man. If you, if you give me a chance, I will I will do it. But I need. It's, it's got to go both ways. Hey, man, I've been real with you, dude, and that's all that you can ask for from me. And realness isn't always just happy-go-lucky questions or answers, you know? It's, it's, it's real shit, you know? And if you want to be a part of that real shit, you can, or you can, you know, keep being a joke, you know? It's up to you. So, uh, new album. How would you describe it? New album. Rockabilly. Um... How is it going to be different from all the other bands out there? Think more like a little more el elvishish, elvish, elvishish, elvishish. Like elvish, like elvish. Uh, dark elves <laughs> and wood elves. <laughs> elvish. Elvish. It's going to be very elvish. Yeah. Lord of the Rings ish. Sure. Yeah, but I mean, let's just wrap it up, man. I'm just being real with you, bro. I love you to death. I appreciate what you do. But you know, from now on, dude, going with a different mindset, dude, because this is not the mindset we want to be interviewed in. We want somebody who's going to you know, dig the truth out of us and not dig a bunch of bullshit out, you know, because we're here to laugh and have fun, you know, but at the same time, you know, we want to we want to be taken seriously for our art, man, because we put our passions into it. And I realize you put your passion into your art too, man, but make it more about the art and less about the scum. And that's it. Love you guys, you fans. This is for you, not for this guy. <laughs> well, I think we have our answer. Never Shot Never has definitely changed. Uh, so, I just got done interviewing Never Shop Never. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> not gonna lie, it was definitely disappointing. I think probably the most frustrating thing about today is I think Christopher Drew knew that the New York Times was gonna be here. Um, he knew I was going to drive seven hours. And he knew that, you know, he knew this was a big thing. If he didn't want to do the interview, he should have just said no, you know. Um, I guess I'm just... I guess I just feel like... I feel like he just kind of lied to me to make a, try to make a fool out of me or something, you know. You know, I think, I think what really hurt the most about what he said was when he basically called my show a joke because, um, you know,
It's not a joke. It's all about it's all about you guys, you know. One thing that I'm wondering is, you know, should I post this video? And uh, I've always been a believer that, you know, people need, you need to show people your people at your high and at, and at your lows. You know, you got to be real. And this was definitely one of my lows, so. Well guys, it's been an interesting day. Um, I've said this a lot, it didn't really go the way I, well, I am sweaty, it is hot. You know, at the end of the day, I did my best. I always do my best. I give 110% at everything I do. And uh, this is no exception, you know? Uh, no regrets, I'm gonna do better hopefully next time. And um, you know, good luck to Chris moving forward. And uh, hopefully you guys keep watching my videos, so. Thank you guys. Uh, good luck, Chris. And uh, reporting for YouTube, doing many more interviews coming up soon. I'm Brian Stars. All right, see you guys.